Yeah. Okay, this is Brian Gore. He is a member of the International Association of Equine Dentistry. Correct? Right? That's good. And he's here to talk to you guys about what? Equine Dentistry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you guys for, for uh, coming. Um, what I want to do is basically open up the subject of Equine Dentistry and explain to you the different levels of Equine Dentistry. Also, want to explain to you the development of horses teeth. Um, most people will have their vet do, do dentistry, which is fine. Um, generally, they use a, a file and they rasp the teeth. Uh, unfortunately, most horse owners aren't really sure what's going on in the horse's mouth. They just know some files are going in there, they're doing some floating, but not really sure what they're doing or why they're doing it exactly. They, they just know that the teeth should be floating on a regular basis. What I want to explain to you is that there's different qualities of dentistry. There is the basic file floating, which has its limitations, and there's more advanced techniques using rotorized equipment and the actual techniques and the approach that they go as far as doing the dentistry is more sophisticated so that you get every single problem that wasn't out addressed. But in order to understand why we need uh, motorized tools and why the files don't really count as far as doing dentistry properly, I need to explain to you how the horse's mouth develops and the abnormality that will, will happen over time. I'm going to grab some skulls and explain that first. Now this is a young, young horse skull and it shows the teeth inside the jawbone developing. Uh, this horse is under, under is about, two, about two years old. And you've got a developing tooth here. You've got teeth that are coming into the jawbone. They start off with three teeth when they're first born. They're called deciduous caps, they're the three molars. And as the head gets longer, because there isn't room to fit six teeth in a foal's head, so they, they only start off with three. And it, as the head grows, a new tooth comes in, and the head gets a little longer, and a new tooth comes in, and as it gets longer, another tooth comes in, a total of six moles upper and lower. Well, it's actually three pre-moles and three moles. The front ones have baby caps and deciduous teeth that fall out the first three. The back three that come in are permanent teeth. Now, as you can see inside the jawbone, the teeth are kind of long. Okay, they're not this little tooth that you think, everyone sees in the gum line, they see maybe a half inch of tooth showing, and they think that's the horse's tooth and maybe a little bit of a root. But in actuality, I'm going to get another skull where I'll pull the whole tooth out and show you exactly how long these teeth really are. Chewing this food, masticating, the teeth keep wearing away. Now, if the tooth wore away within a very short period of time, the tooth would be gone, they have no teeth left to work to, to eat. So, nature's providing the teeth that keep erupting. What that means is the tooth is moving up slowly, about an eighth of an inch a year, and keeps supplying more and more tooth so that the horse won't run out of teeth as it keeps grinding this food. Now, in the wild, a horse lives to about mid teens, 15, 17, if it's lucky, and then domestically kept horses, I have clients with horses that are in their 40s. So we take care of them better, we can adjust their food, they're not exposed to the elements, so that they, they live a lot longer and they don't have to worry about predators. So this is why the teeth erupt, it keeps supplying more and more tooth to, to um, supply them with teeth through their whole life, and in nature it's only about, I'm going to do questions at the end, so we'll get to that. It, and and uh, it gives them teeth to masticate their food through their expected life, which is about 15, 16, 17. The problem is, over time, that occlusal surface area with the wear, every tooth doesn't wear exactly at the same rate. Now I'm going to show you an extreme example of a Mustang that was 25 that was taken in by a rescue. And this is what happens if the teeth aren't corrected. Now this is a, a really horrid example. Unfortunately, this horse suffered a pretty awful uh, life because this was here for a long, long time. Okay? Now, a typical file flood, like I mentioned earlier, they're going to rasp the sides of the teeth. Well, there's benefits to rasping the sides of the teeth, the, the points, but if you rasp the points, you did nothing for this area here, the, the occlusal surface. This scenario, with these teeth as bad as they are, you're not going to make the horse masticate or chew its food properly because it's too far gone. But at least you can offer comfort. So, in a scenario like this, with this, this um, bad, we're not going to try to make the horse chew food better because it's too late, but we want to take pressure from its mouth with the, the, the teeth that are joining in are pressing into the upper jaw. We at, least, at least we can relieve some pressure by reducing these high spots and at least making the, the mouth somewhat balanced. Um, when I do dentistry, 
I use uh, a motorized handpiece, there's a disc, and a tissue gun. The reason for that, as I mentioned earlier, I am going to be working on the occlusal surfaces, so I can come in here and you can imagine what this this real quickly. This is another horse of a wave. Here's a small wave. I can get in here and actually find the high spots and grind them down. And concentrate on the areas that are high. So I can actually reduce anything that's protruding. Here's a tooth on this side protruding quite above the rest. This tooth is, is causing pain on the opposing side of its mouth. With a tool like this, I can get in and concentrate just on that tooth and grind it down. Now with a file, you've got tissue back here. It's very hard to file towards the back of the throat and not cause tissue damage. So it's not really the easiest way to do it with a file. It can be done, but there's very, very few people that know how to do it. They actually have the file blade flip the other way so it cuts when you pull. You've got to go in there, sit the file on top, pull. Go in there, gently sit the file on top, pull. And it's very, very slow. And it can, you can reduce these problems, but most people don't worry about that. The average person who's flooding their teeth, they're just following off the sharp points, and that's basically all they're doing. And quite often, they're not even doing a good job at that. Um, well, kind of a perfectionist. I don't believe you should have someone blow your horse's teeth, and in your mind you're saying, the horse's teeth have been done thoroughly, so I don't have to worry about the teeth right now. I've seen many horses who have been bloated, and not a, a month later or a few weeks later, I go in there, and there's a huge weight complex with the teeth higher and lower, because all they did was follow the points and never did address the weight. So again, with this tool, I can find a way, I can rest it just on that area, reduce that high spot, and leave the areas that are excessively worn alone, and then bring all these back in balance so they're all the same length again. If you do that, if you lie with the horse's mouth, the teeth will last longer. Whenever a tooth is too tall, there's no problem reducing that, but you also wore away the opposing tooth. So you destroy good uh, teeth on the opposite side. That's where the damage comes in, is the opposing tooth. So that the whole idea is to prevent a scenario where you destroy the upper molars because you have this giant wave complex over here. Now, this could have been caught, this is a 25 year old horse, probably when this horse was about 10 or 12, it had a very mild wave. Just a little bit of a rise in the teeth, wasn't exactly straight. So all that would have taken was to get that drummel tool in there and just lower a couple of areas and in, in the front and back here on the maxilla and the weight complex on the mandible, just a light adjustment. And then once a year, keep grinding those areas down, just small adjustment. If that was done early enough, this horse's mouth would look most likely close to this, all level and still viable teeth we can, we can, we can still chew through. Ironically, this horse did come from a rescue and they used to live in Southern California, so I used to do their horse's teeth. But they moved to Northern California and where they were, there was no one that did specialize in dentistry, so they they had to get the local vet out. And he did come in a month before the horse died and floated the teeth. Well, it didn't do anything. I'm not trying to, you know, criticize the vet, but in, in reality, they did call the vet out. He, he did float the teeth. So whatever sharp points there may or may not have been, they were addressed. But the horse's critical situation was just left in the horse's mouth as is. And they only found out after the horse died that the horse had teeth like this. Um, and they actually took a photo of it and sent me an email and said, do you want the skull? Because they know I... Flex culture. I said, sure, I'll take it. It'll be a great educational tool.